remember watching repeats of uh, Saturday Night Live with uh, Richard Pryor when um, Chevy Chase. Yeah, he and Chevy Chase opposite each other, uh, and that was hilarious. That was awesome. That was Chevy Chase using the N word, uh, and I mean that was that was the punchline. That was the funny part of the bit. Like that was you couldn't have you couldn't have toned that down and had it make any sense. Uh, do you know? I, I don't know. If it's uh, they're sitting there. Chevy Chase works for uh, the IRS or a, something. It was an exorcist, I think. Was it ex- no, you're right. It, well, they're, they're just they're just sitting in an office building. And, no, you're uh, right. It wasn't the exorcist. Uh, they're sitting there and they're do- oh uh, they're doing word association. Um, and uh, they start off with just some random things where Chevy Chase says a word and Richard Pryor says the first thing that comes to his mind. Uh, and they get progressively worse and worse. They start using. Uh, I remember. Yeah, they start using uh, various epithets. Uh, Spear choker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I Richard Pryor honky. gets getting it's getting anger and anger, and they, yeah, they get up to spear chucker, honky. Chevy Chase calls him an N word or just says it. He doesn't call him that. Uh, dead honky. And I don't know. That was hilarious. Uh, but yeah, that was like that was an example of someone. I, I don't think Chevy Chase's career was followed by the fact that didn't you once say the N word on TV? Like it was just, it was what it was, and it was. Like, it made sense. It wasn't some, like, there, there probably aren't whole Wikipedia articles about the avant-garde nature of it. It just kind of was that thing. Like, that, I don't know. We, we talked about it earlier, but that seems like an example of... It wasn't him trying to be cheap or, like, it, that was a legitimate comedy thing. And some white guy had to say that in a comedy bit, and it was funny. Well, Roseanne Cash spent about ten years trying to live down the time she said... This song puts the cunt back in country. So, I guess it depends on who you are, where you she are. She was a raging cunt, too. In the context in which Rose it occurs. Rosanne Cash. Raging cunt. Rosanne Cash? Rosanne Cash. Oh. You've never heard the stories about her funneling funds to the Hutu rebels? No. Um, uh, there wow. You go. Raging cunt. Does that mean that's the story right there? That is, yeah. She funneled funds to the Hutu rebels. Yeah. What a raging cunt. Anyway. So, so. Um, you know what? I know a lot about a lot of things. We Wikipedia. Amazing. It's a Renaissance man. You know a lot about the Renaissance? I know a shit ton about the Renaissance. Wow. Now I'm glad Gregory's not here. We have 30 <laughs> minutes of <laughs> Renaissance history on the tape. Just if Gregory was here about five minutes in, I would call the police and say he's diddling kids. As long as we're not he's talking. not diddling kids. He's not we're really comedians. diddling kids. Yes. On the other hand. He's on the bus out to diddle kids right now. <laughs> just as long as we're not talking me. about the difference between sports and games. That was a throwing segment. For me. That's a yeah. that's a callback. Okay, so let's go to another fighting word. Sarah Silverman in Twitter fight with Chris Anderson and Steve Case over retard routine. Sarah Silverman, comic cheese lover, boundary pusher, was invited to speak at TED this year, a conference on technology, education, and design. TED always draws big names and they try to mix it up by adding entertainers to the schedule, along with world-class scientists, politicians, business leaders, and media honchos. But while past performers like Matt Grunning, Grunning, the Simpson guy, and Regina Spector kept it low-key, Silverman decidedly did not. Although the video is not available yet, TechCrunch has a first-hand account. Apparently in reaction to Sarah Palin's recent crusade against the word, Silverman kept using the term retarded over and over again in a routine which was about wanting to adopt a retarded child. Here's what she said according to TechCrunch's tipster. The only problem with adopting a retarded child is that the retarded child when you are 80 is, well, still retarded, and that she wouldn't enjoy the freedoms of setting them free at age 18, so she was only going to adopt a retarded child with a terminal illness. So it has an expiration date. Because who would want to adopt a retarded child with a terminal illness? Well, someone who was awesome like her. The room reportedly fell silent at this moment, and Sarah went on to sing a song about penises. <laughs> like you do. So. Oh my god, that sounds like the recipe for a Travis Charles joke. Wow. <laughs> Anyone have any thoughts on oh, this? Oh, yeah, because I'm off point on that one. <laughs> no. The, what, I want to know why the retarded 
like where that hot button came from because all right the n-word and kike and all that those are racial slurs and those slurs they never had any use beforehand but like i feel like retarded i mean once upon i don't think it's a slur or i don't think it started out that way i don't isn't any word that you use to hurt another person a slur uh, probably. But that's not. She said she wanted to adopt a retarded child. She wasn't using that to hurt the child. She wanted to adopt a retarded child. But, but if I started calling somebody, it, but, well, you're a special needs per, or whatever. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, then stop calling it that. Yeah. I mean, that's. Yeah, like, that one's. I see what you're weird. saying. The the comparisons I've heard when people talk about it is they don't compare it to like racial epithets. They compare it to like gay, where it is offensive for me to be like, dude, that shit's gay. I'm like, you know what? You know, you shouldn't use that in a derogatory sense. That's that's rude. Alright, but I can still call a gay person gay, right? I can say, oh, that man sleeps with other men. He's gay. And then I can be like, I can't believe you would use that. Like, that's the word. That's what the word means. I think we should just, for like a week or two, just reverse it. Like, instead of <laughs> instead of saying something would be gay, like that movie was super gay, instead, when describing a gay man, just be like, that guy is totally a fanny pack. I think that'd be awesome. I wow. think that would... Okay. That girl loves softball. Like, if we just reversed it a little bit, I feel like... That we can get around it. Okay. I'm thinking no. No. Me too. Well, the but phrase I think used, didn't it used to be moron. It wasn't that the, the dumb the idiot or dumb, dumb was yeah, a big one. Those were negative, so people started using retarded, and now retarded has become yeah. a bad word. word. Yeah, because if I would understand being offended, like you know, if I said, oh, you know, one of you said something, I was like, dude, that's retarded. I can understand somebody being like, hey, you know what? That's a little offensive. There are actually retarded people. But I can't call them retarded either. Pick one. Either I can call the stupid shit around me retarded, or I can call retards retarded in like a perfectly nice clinical way. But if I can't call anything retarded, that's a problem. I think it goes back to what Jesse was saying earlier, and it's it, it's all in who your audience is. Like, yeah. I could call someone a midget, and probably no one at this table would be offended unless maybe you had a relative that was a midget, or a son that was, or if you were a midget, then you would probably be like, oh, I'm a little person. Same way with, with retardation. If you call someone a retard, if they know someone in their family, friends, that is, you know, mentally retarded, then they take offense to the word. I have a cousin who's retarded. So yeah. Or has have, a disability. I have an uncle with Down disability. syndrome. I'm not offended by it. But not to I be a dentist, that, like, Twilight. But if I could see this real quick. Like, just let, hear me out on this one, okay? I'm going to read the joke. Horse lovers are offended. Uh, the only problem with, dop- with adopting a Michael Bay child is that the Michael Bay child when you're 80 is, well, still Michael Bay. See how much easier and less offensive that is? Like, Unless you're Michael Bay. Or in his family. <laughs> you're well, Johnny Bay. There's such a son. small group. And if you saw Transformers, you know exactly what yeah, I mean. Yeah, Johnny Bay gets it. It's <laughs> not nice. Yeah, you're right. Jackass stole 20 bucks. Well, right. A lot of words are moving targets. Um, like at one, one time, colored people was like a perfectly acceptable word to use. Yeah. For, for black people. And then Negro was used, and then that became unacceptable. And then black people were used, and then now there's some people who think African American is like more the phrase to use. I hate that phrase. I would, just, so, uh, I would like for somebody just to tell me. Like, if people are going to get offended constantly at, at certain words and just, you know, make us change them and they get offended at that, just give us the word. Just give us the word that you want to say. Like, okay, these people aren't retarded anymore, they are flippity floppity flu. That's how it's gonna be for the next hundred years. We'll reassess in twenty one hundred. That's that's how Well that that goes to freedom of speech, I think. Yeah, that's I'm just saying. That way you know, I can say it wherever I want, whenever I want. And uh, they can't say boo about it until we vote to change flippity floppity flu. Used to be you could say stewardess, now you have to say flight attendant. Yeah, or gams. You say, <laughs> you say janitor, and now you say genius man. Secretary's Day became office administrator. Administrator's uh, Day, administrative. Comics are still comics. I don't use comics because it gets confused with like comics. But uh, it's shorter than speaking comedian. Yeah, that's yeah. But there's that confusion. Joke crafters. I don't, know, I don't even know what it would be. Jokes. I don't like it. Uh, I think actually the politically correct term for at least some people is just hack. It's not See, right now, to call now that's like that's an inside that's like an inside the, the beltway or an inside baseball term because if you say hack in England, I think doesn't that mean like somebody who drives a 
taxi. Horse and buggy, or yeah. Oh, in New York, yeah, it's a taxi driver lingo for a cab driver. Yeah. And then there, it seems like within comedy, there's like some people who use hack as somebody who engages in stereotype or unoriginal comedy, and then there are other people who use it as like joke stealer. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's not a good thing either way. Yeah. But the one is, like, if you're just unoriginal, you can get over that or, or get better or find your voice. Like, a lot of people will start off doing hacky stuff and then kind of grow into it. If you're stealing people's jokes, like, you made a decision to do that. You don't, you don't grow out of that and suddenly it's okay. You don't joke, hey, remember that time when I did that guy's entire set on stage for money? <laughs> I think I think one of them is the factor in the in the other. If you have no original premises, yes. and you want to be a comic, it yeah. eventually leads to stealing. That's why. Like I would I would never use the word hack specifically to describe someone who stole jokes, but joke thieves are probably also we'll hacks. Just call them a mincia. Yeah. Well, actually, I think there's so. hundred years that works. I know. I'd like to do a podcast. And, uh, I want to call them Neds. It's a little a little insidey. I'll tease that segment there. All right. Sometimes we'll do a, we'll do a segment on joke, we'll do a podcast on joke stealing. Well, that'd be cool. Yeah. I do want to mention really quick. You know what I don't get? The uh, you said the midget little person thing. Uh, that specifically is one of the PC terms I don't get. Midget means midget. It doesn't mean anything else. No one walks around saying, "Dude, that is some midget shit right there." Like it's not an offensive term when applied <laughs> to anything else. Yeah. <laughs> little person <laughs> sounds more offensive to me. A little person. That's a pejorative word. Yeah. You're like a person, but less than a real one. <laughs> It means little. Call me pejorative. <laughs> so now we'll talk about taboos. Taboos. Is there anything that you won't talk about in your act, Eric? Is there anything that's just too hot to handle, or that doesn't fit in with your personality, or uh, that you don't feel authentic talking about, or is there anything that disturbs you when other comedians talk about? It? Yeah, I'm a little. I'm, I'm tired of the. Uh, the I think I think Sinbad covered it all. Uh, <laughs> oh, the, Difference between men and women. The difference between white guys and black guys. Uh, yeah. We get it. It's been it's been done a thousand ways. Can we just can we can yeah, we let that it goes go? back to hacking. Hasn't Chris Rock kind of done that too? Yeah, or, or I think maybe Chris, Dave Chappelle. Or? Yeah, but I think guys like that can can get away with it because it's not their entire act. It's just a bit, and and fi and frankly, they do it better than yeah than, than anybody else. Well, that's the problem. You can any any of this stuff. Like, you can do, if you can really make it work, if you can really sell it, if you can really do it better than everyone who's done it before, then you can get away with it. Yeah. And everybody believes that they can. Like, everybody really thinks that they're doing it in a way that no one has ever done before. It's totally different when I say that I'm Irish, so I like to drink and get in fights. No one's ever said it the way I say it before. <laughs> Or no, taboo stuff. Uh, sorry, I got yeah. lost on what we're doing. Uh, taboo stuff. I don't know. I uh, I try and stay away from racial slurs and just racial jokes in general, unless you're no longer a minority. Uh, Asians. <laughs> and uh, I mean, they make up a lot of the world's population. Yeah. So technically, deal with it. Um, but yeah, other than that, I try and stay away from racial stuff unless it's. Uh, it's, it's just hilarious, which I haven't found one yet. Um, yeah. Another taboo, I don't think it's accepted, but it certainly should be. Anytime you, uh, you say to the audience something like, you'll get that soon, you'll get that tomorrow, explain it to the person oh, next yeah. to you, uh, that just makes you look like a jackass in every yeah. sense of the word. Um, especially if you do it about a dick joke. Because there's no way nobody is getting a dick joke. It's probably just not fucking funny. Yeah. So that was my little mini rant. Yeah, blame the audience. When your material isn't going well, yeah, blame of course. the audience. Oh, you guys well, must be stupid because there. you yeah. couldn't figure out that a hot dog was supposed to represent a penis. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> Miles above the rest of us. Yeah. My biggest You're all pejorative. Yeah. <laughs> we, we used hot dog in the pejorative sense. My, yeah, my biggest one is, I know what you're thinking. That came up on Last Comment Standing. They did like a little rapid montage. Did, did you just hack did I? a conversation <laughs> about hacking and taboos? Did I? Apparently was, you did. That's weird. That's ironic. I'm going to add something to my taboo list. <coughs> uh, anybody that conversationally hacks a show. <laughs> <laughs> I 
How about I'm the fucking around the bear? Easy. How about comics who try and throw their material into casual conversations to see oh, if you laugh? Sweet mother of fuck. <laughs> yes. Yeah. God yeah. Odyssey was the, had the best reaction. We were down in uh, Arizona, and a comic from I think Arkansas was doing that to him, and he just stopped him. He was like, "Are you fucking doing material on me right now?" <laughs> That happened to me, and the guy, it was outside of the class in Richmond, and the comic was like, he's like, when I was growing up, I was too poor to afford rain. And I'm like, okay, seriously, we're not doing this now. <laughs> he's like, what? What are we doing? I was like, we're not telling jokes now. It's just patio, we're talking. Mm-hmm. No, that's true. Really, that was true. <laughs> you were too poor to, af- okay, that was true then. Thank you. But yeah, that's a huge... Man. I do that to other people. Well, yeah, you can do that to other yeah, people. Yeah, I mean, I, I, <laughs> if they don't know it, if they you know do it to non comics, they don't care. They're just like, hey, free joke. That's the counter to, hey, funny man, tell me a joke. I just did. That's what I've been doing for 10 minutes. <laughs> just prove you're not funny. That's a good call. <laughs> you can do it to other people, that's fine. I don't, yeah, but not to comics. Yeah. Yeah, that is, uh, that is irritating. I think the. My, my favorite part is when you'll be talking about something and they'll take it in a completely different direction just to get in their bit. Like, yeah. oh man, it's hot out here. It's gotta be, you know, 90, 95. Oh yeah, it is pretty hot. I had this really hot girlfriend once and, uh... Wow. What? what just happened? Yeah, my dad used to walk across mountains to go to school. What are you doing? <laughs> Who are you? You'll get that on the way home, podcast people. Yeah. <laughs> Miles above. See the hot dog. It looks like a dick. That's what. I don't know if you're grasping this. Also, when I say my meat, I mean my dick. Don't worry. I'll pick up on it eventually. Amazing. This guy's got like 18 pound weights on his ears. I know. Oh sweet God. Got a little oh my God. Are you sure? It's kind of awesome. Oh, just, I'm just used to the blind guy. Oh, okay. You know what you don't see? Well, He's I just want you to know, uh, on this podcast, all of us just look like giant pussies because we very clearly got much quieter <laughs> when the guy was near us that we were making fun of. And once he walked away, we're like, we're yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, whatever, whatever. And he had tusks on his ears. I actually am a giant pussy. You don't need a podcast to. <laughs> I think comics in general are very tough people. You know, Obviously, see, when he says pussy, what he means is like someone who's afraid to fight, not yeah. an actual vagina. You'll get it on the way home. <laughs> eh? Eh? <laughs> I mean, I know what you're thinking. Well, watch out now. <laughs> now, what you just listening can't realize is that Jesse Thomas actually looks exactly like a giant hot dog. Do you think people Therefore, are listening? No. <laughs> Catchphrases <laughs> are taboo. Catchphrases <laughs> are retarded in almost every sense of the word. Get her done. What the fuck does that mean? That means what his, his kids mean? will, and his grandkids, that means they will go to any college they want yeah. to. That's yeah. what that means. I will say, uh, I don't I'm have to like your work, but a, a paycheck will kind of invalidate all my arguments. Oh, that's absolutely true. Yeah. So. I can I can think you're a hack all I want. If you mm-hmm. have an HBO special and four comedy DVDs and I don't, Yeah. Uh, well, you shouldn't care. Yeah, if it comes down to, to getting some money mm-hmm. for it, I will I will scream dynamite at the top of my lungs for <laughs> however long it needs to happen. Anybody? Anyone? Anyone? By the way, you the were. nitroglycerin uh, you reference was uh, when we were in uh, Cincinnati, and he was the headliner brouhaha, and we had to take him back to his hotel. Were you there for that? Dynamite. You picked him up from his hotel, but we had to drive him back. I think he had already left. And some lady, like he was ro- walking from the car, walking to the car, and some lady ran out and begged him to say dynamite, which he won't do. He's like, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. And she goes, well, say something like it. He goes, uh, nitroglycerin. Comic genius. Comedy gold. Nice. That's what killed Gary Coleman. Nitroglycerin? No. Dynamite? What you say? Oh, what you talking about, Willie? Catchphrase. Yeah, that's what killed him. It had nothing to do with his entire body being irregularly shaped. He was pejorative. Or having a <laughs> money grubbing wife who just left him there to die. Uh, she... Don't forget parents. Yeah. Is he a they started the ball. He was pejorative. Uh, neither, actually. Hey, some kind of kidney problem, didn't he? Yeah, he had a he had like glandular disorders, but he wasn't actually. No one cares. 
Yeah. See, that's the benefit of obscurity is you can say these outrageous things and, and unlike Sarah Silverman, you don't get people saying nasty things about you because no one cares. That's true. He's dead and short. I like how every once in a while they do care, though. I'll tell a joke to 14 people. One of them will find me later and be like, oh. hey! Oh, oh, Mike, no. It's a joke! Oh, Mike, why? Brady Bunch movie. Oh. Oh, Mike, no. So does anything, anybody have anything more to say on the subject? Or is it too much for that? Yeah. We covered, we covered most of like the bad taboos with the other stuff. Yeah. Like we covered our well, we really covered taboos. Stuff. We just covered stuff that we hate. But I mean, I mean, before really we started talking about taboos, yeah. we, co I mean, like, like we covered. Like, oh, I don't know that we covered not, anything not dropping, taboos. Yeah, not dropping end bombs as a taboo, but we kind of covered that in the first three sections. I, I will say, uh, uh, rape seems to be a taboo, and um, yeah, and I mean. Asked? It, well, incest, I think you can get away with, actually. I don't know if that's necessarily a taboo. Yeah, as, as discussing it. Not necessarily the action. No, even the action you can get away with pretty easily. Um, really? Yes. There are a fair number of date rape jokes. It, it in and itself isn't a crime. Yeah, that... Uh, it just usually goes hand in hand with molestation or rape. That's a good point. If you're not doing either of those, who cares? Date rape seems to get away with a lot more than just, uh, than just saying rape. And, uh... Yeah. Roofy jokes. Yeah. yeah. The problem is that... The you got to kill, man. You can do that. Thank to, you. To be hey. funny, stuff has to be kind of... It has to hurt. All right, sunshine and puppies is not a joke, ever. Like, there has to be some part of your punchline in which you talk about something that sucks or something that's painful. There has to be a butt to every joke, whether it be you or someone else or a fictional person or the audience or whatever. Uh, so everything, you have to pick something that kind of sucks and talk about it. So it's kind of a, you've got to tread that line of, does this suck so much that no one's going to care? Like, you know, you, you can't tell jokes about shiny, happy things unless they were awful and had dead body parts in them. Unless it's it's true. Shiny, happy people, which you can definitely make fun of that. I think that's true of entertainment in general. It's like nobody's going to go see a movie in which there's no conflict. Right, yeah. Nobody's going to see a play yeah. in which people are just sitting around being happy. And yeah, soap operas, they have everything and they're still miserable. So that's because if they weren't it's the miserable, out lighting. there wouldn't be a soap opera. Yeah. Did anybody watch uh, Last Comic Standing, the latest the New York segment? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, I feel like I just keep getting tossed softballs to make me seem bitter and jaded. Uh, <laughs> It just kind of makes me sad. There's a lot of guys that, there's a lot of people on there that uh, that, that I, I really think have no business being on there. And there's a lot of people that are very, very funny that, uh, you know, are sort of getting pushed by the wayside a little bit. Um, I like that woman from the last episode who did the Mrs. Hitler thing. I thought that would she was pretty good. She oh, was yeah. funny. The one who did the Mr. Clean joke with the Spanish language soap opera. The pretty girl in the red dress. I don't know what the fuck that was or how she ended up getting passed. I just, uh, there's certain things on there that, that just that get, kill me. I've seen several people that have had Comedy Central Presents in the last two, three years on there. I've seen, Tommy uh, Jonigan. Tommy Jonigan, who is very funny, and, and I hope he wins the whole fucking thing because he definitely deserves it. He's hilarious. Um, uh, who else? Oh, Kirk Fox. Kirk Fox. One of the two. I don't know which one. The guy with the mustache from uh, the first episode. Um, he's really, really funny. Maranzio Vance is great as well. That guy's hilarious. But then I see people like Lori Kilmartin and Jim David, who I remember from watching Comedy Central in the 90s. They had all sorts of specials and crap. Kevin Meany was on there. You know who Kevin Meany is? So they have people from all across the spectrum. Yeah, they seem to have a lot of people, but I just, uh, you know, th there was one guy in particular, the guy in the first episode, the big caveman-looking Mexican dude. You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, with the, like, the, yes. the huge crowd. Uh Got into the judges, had an okay set, 
And the judges straight up told him, I think Geraldo straight up told him, he was like, I've seen you a thousand times before, I know you're funnier than this, I'm saying yes, we'll see you tonight. Which to me is completely uh, going against the message of what that's supposed to be. Well, when I watched the, f the first season, it seemed like it was more like breaking people out who were like relatively new or fresh. Yeah. That, you know, I'm talking about with that fan, this friend. Yeah, that fan. Uh, and uh, back then, uh, who's the fat guy? Ralphie May. Ralphie May. Rich you know, I thought it was more like, you know, it was sort of like catch a rising star type thing. We're going to get, we're going to, we're going to get people who are relatively obscure and then break them out. So it's it now was. it's like people that have been in the business for 10 years. Yeah. Well, not only that, I see a bunch of guys who, uh, who are just hysterically funny that have been doing it for a long time uh, standing in the background and I'm just like well, how, how are these guys not on there they're not judges they're not there's no reason that Robert Hawkins should be standing in the background of that show yeah and the, Natasha what the, what the fuck is her name Legero whoever Legero. she is God, she's just a fucking laughing head on there she finds everything funny the, the only thing she didn't find funny was when the one dude called her Nancy and told her nobody gave a shit what she had to say, which I found hysterical. <laughs> uh, the only person that I, I think on there has any type of, of really legitimacy is, uh, is Andy Kindler, as far as judges go. Geraldo's a great comic, and uh, he's got well-documented issues, but... Uh, Andy Kindler is the, the one person that I look at on there and I say, you know what, I, his opinion matters to me. Everybody else is just fucking theater. The criticism that I've seen in, in, in reviews of the show is that the judges are fo more focused on being witty or amusing or funny or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so consequently, it's like a one-up type thing rather than here you can learn from our critiques. It's more like how can I say something that's going to make the other judges laugh or make me look good yeah. on TV? You know, it's not. No, I can agree. Of course, with that. The, the purpose of the show is to sell soap and be entertaining. It's not mm -hmm. to serve as an edu. You know, it's not like a. It's not like the learning annex or something. You know, no, no, it certainly isn't. Uh, yeah, they. Uh, yeah. I think my other major problem with the show, and this is, you know, I, I mean, obviously, it's why people tune in, but. When they show people like the, the fucking guy on the stilts in the bear suit and uh, the guy who was dressed up like the devil with the fucking ukulele. Uh, when you show guys like that on television, uh, I feel like that plays into the, the public's idea of when we put on a show. Saying, hey, you know, come out, check out local comedy. They think back to the jackass in the devil suit. And they're like, I'm not going to waste my time doing that even if it is free. So... Yeah, I guess that's, that's the my new, last comic rant. That's that's the new cliche. It used to wow. be, I think the big cliche used to be people that would get up on stage and tell funny stories. Yeah. And now I guess we the, call those girl comics. Mm, 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 that, that, I don't own that. You do. <laughs> oh, that, that's the, the, I'm not responsible for incident. I'm not responsible for anybody's opinions other than my own. Oh, that's true. Everything I've said. Halfway responsible, not for I'm, I'm not responsible for my own opinions. Everything I've said is entirely I'm, my opinion. I'm, I'm willing, willing to take prompted. responsibility for Everything exactly I half of Eric Monaco's opinions. <laughs> I'm not even getting paid to do this. I'm drunk. Really? So, really? Uh, yeah, I know. It's a shocker. So, so you're the only one. Yeah. Huh? So, um, <laughs> Look, is it rude to tell him how much we're all getting paid? Uh, it's awesome. oh, I'd also like to thank the good people at ShamWow for bringing me out here today. But wait, there's more. The case of Shamar was going to arrive at Chief Doorstep. Uh, I would like to point out something. I, I'm reasonably certain that the sleeping black man who was next to us the whole time was pretending to be asleep because he was really uncomfortable and didn't know what he was supposed to do. Well, you're supposed to let sleeping black men lie, so it's okay. How do you do that? Ask them if they're the father? The only, only other thing I want to say me. about the uh, last comic standing is I don't, I don't understand why they're having just the judges. It seems to me that sort of like I don't know what would be the equivalent of it's like it just why are comics getting up and just performing for three judges? It seems like unless you're doing it in the context of an audience, it's like. It's flying without wings. Or they want, I'm gonna crack an egg of knowledge on you right here. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but we actually lucked out that you brought this up today because we happen to have somebody 
that uh, tried out for last comic standing with us. So he can actually chime in. I just remembered that. Why'd you let me talk like a jackass Somebody for 20 minutes? Somebody actually knows what they're talking about. Yeah, I, uh, if you want to call it that, sleeping outside like homeless fantasy camp for a couple of days. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> only to be, only to have no one pay attention to you. Yeah, the whole, you're at the, if you want to get on the, on the show and you don't have an agent, dress up like a devil and bring a ukulele because that's the only way you're getting on in the show. You have to have an agent and you ever notice that the people, they show shots of people camping out outside, but every time someone goes in for an audition, their hair is perfectly coiffed, they're clean shaven, that's because they were in a hotel room and they got up for their appointments. That's what happened in the last comic stand. Yeah. Well, they, they do show people in, in hotel rooms. 15 seconds, really. Oh, I was ranting, and I'm not even apologizing for ranting. I'm apologizing for his ranting. <laughs> so, would you call that rigged, or, or uh, is it like they run the disclaimer at the end so that lets TV. them off the hook? Disingenuous. It's good TV. Yeah, disingenuous works. Uh, yeah. What I can't figure out is why they don't, uh, why they don't actually do what they what they are proclaiming to do. You know, I, I can't figure that out. I don't understand why it's better to pimp the, you know, if you can make, let's say Guy Tory, because that guy is a national headliner already and been in several major motion pictures. Uh, if you're going to have Guy Tory, what, what's, why would you rather get, you know, two more dollars a seat yeah. out of him than possibly discovering somebody completely new that's never played any of those markets before that already has the steam of being the winner? Uh, go out there and, you know, get fucking $30 a ticket or, you know, $20 a ticket from them because they've already got the gravitas of winning Last Comic Standing, thus declaring them the funniest person in America for that year. Well, that's a knock on Jay Leno. He didn't, you know, he had this position and he didn't, he didn't break any new, break out any new talent. He just sort of did yeah. the safe stuff. There's a lot of knocks on Jay Leno. Yeah, well, yeah. that could be a whole podcast. That could be I think the main difference whole between podcast. comedy... And say, singing for instance, is you have to have experience. If you're good, if you're a good singer, you, they can give you any song. But if you've got a good five, you know, and you can take any good song, like uh, what's the anybody who won American Idol, uh, Taylor Hicks, whatever. I don't, I never watched the show, but Kelly Clarkson. Okay, well, you can give her a bunch of songs. Here, you're you're headlining a show. There you go. But a comic. If you get up there and have good auditions, each, what, five to seven minutes, that doesn't necessarily mean you have what it takes to be a headliner. So I can see why they wouldn't take, it, they wouldn't take a chance on an unknown. Well, you figure if you start from the ground up, like Eric did, you got your, well, how much time was it in front of the PA that you ended up doing? Um, two to three minutes. Two to three minutes. So that's two to three minutes right there. You get in front of the judges, you do another two to three minutes. That, that it gives you four six to minutes. six minutes. Um, you go up, you do your showcase show, that's, you know, whatever it is, five to seven. Uh, you go, and even if you don't get challenged throughout the rest of the, the house, I don't even know how they're working at this season. I don't know if there's a house or not. You still no, no, get, there's no house. No, there's no house? house? Okay. I mean, you still got to do like 10, 15 minutes at the end. So by that point in time, you've got half an hour, 45 minutes, you can headline. I think I think that uh, the, the critique of Last Comic Standing is probably the critique of all reality TV shows, which is that the editing does not reflect reality. In other words, one of the things you read about in Survivor is like, I'm really not an a-ho. I was just edited that way. Right. Yeah. So. Um, I think my big problem with Last Comic Standing is at the very end, uh, judges uh, or contestants are picked to go on when the judges consult with NBC and the producers. Or sequences are not shown necessarily. Yeah, sequences not affecting the outcome. That, that one doesn't bother me quite as much, but the, the idea that you have these judges who supposedly are supposed to be these people that you handpicked to say, this is comedy, this is what you should be doing, and then they're getting affected by, uh, you know, fucking so-and-so from NBC and says, well, you know what we really need is an Asian chick. We need an Asian Find us an Asian. And I think some of these people are, are a victim of, of changing fashions or whatever. It's like if Charlie McCarthy in the 40s was like the biggest thing on the planet. 
you know, but now it's like it's just the in thing to be down on on, on ventriculous damage, you know, that's no no longer. Yeah. Or if you were like what was that guy in the, on the Ed Sullivan show uh, that came out of Trump you know, back in the said Sarai Oh, uh, Senior Wences. Yeah, exactly. You know, that stuff was considered to be valid back then and now it's like, well, prop yeah. comics. Now it's 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 fashionable to be against prop comics. Oh well, yeah, you had a lot more variety, and that's uh, I think what's that show now? America's Got Talent. That's kind of what niche. Is. That's that's kind of filling the variety niche. You know, the juggling chainsaws and things like that. It just that's, uh, uh, I just got Pat Oswalt's newest CD, and he's got a whole thing about how in like the early '90s he was doing everybody was a magician. To be uh, to, oh, to get booked, you had to be. Can we, can we turn the camera and take a look at him real quick? <laughs> <laughs> you had to be a uh, a magician <laughs> comedian. I'm sorry, I was afraid. His ears look like fucking uh, pebbles from the Flintstones' hair. Yeah, he's got tusks. Jay Sankey, the guy who wrote Zen and the Art of Stand Up Comedy, was a close up magician and also. A comedian. Now he does just. That's one of the things. Like that's that's a book that everybody cites. It's like he's not doing stand up anymore. He's like just doing magic. Yeah. So it's like it couldn't have been that satisfying for him. We'd still be doing it. True. That's like one of the common bibles. I think actually the way that worked out is you don't you don't have to do magic to be a, a stand up comic. You, in fact, you probably shouldn't. But uh, to be a successful magician, you like that they they aren't as dramatic anymore. The successful stage magicians now really do their, if not outright stand-up, uh, they mix it up a little more. They've got to be a little funnier. They've got to be a little wackier. They can't They can't get away with I have a nice tux and don't say anything, but I snap my fingers and make big jet. No one cares. Yeah, you can't do the Copperfield anymore, the Copperfield mystique. Yeah. It's you, just kind of got to be. Out. You've got to be Penn and Teller to, to be anything. Oh, David Blaine. I mean, he kind of goes for that. He's not, he doesn't have the whole copper field. Well, he does the patter, like he actually, and not the comedy, but he, he, you have, that's more of that personal touch, which I think came out of that. Chris, whatever. Angel. Yeah, he's like the real. I'm sorry, I meant actual stage magicians. Well, he's more like a street magician, that's another classification. Well, like Craig Ferguson works with puppets, and it seems that it works. He does puppets at the, like in his opening monologue. His old things like the puppet comes up on the camera. Oh, at the, really? Yeah, in the beginning of the show, he does that. Like his first two minutes. I thought you were referring to his interview with Jessica Beale. <laughs> <laughs> Zing. Wimmy Wham Wazzle. That's the only catch for it. That's ironic. Up. Thank you. You'll get that on the way Thank home. Thank you, Saucier. <sighs> wow. Somebody gets grumpy when they've been left out in the sun too long. Does anybody else have anything they want to say? Except it's hot as fuck. I think David the Bear Wingfield is a far better name than David C. Wingfield. No one will ever think you're a baseball player if you go by the bear. What? Okay. Never mind. Isn't the reason you added the C because oh, David Oh, that's Field. pretty good too. Okay. I forgot about that. He's mm -hmm. right. So I guess we'll sign off then. My name is Chris Martin. First while hosts. Eric Clonical came here for some coffee and uh, got into this podcast. You have a low threshold. <laughs> Josh Saucier, I'm still from Richmond, Virginia. Jesse Thomas, gay jokes don't make you gay. <laughs> David C. Wingfield, only Jesse Thomas makes you gay. Okay, this podcast was NSFW, Creative Commons for Attribution. Done on June 20th. 20th at the Lamplighter Roasting Company and Cafe, or the Lamplighter Cafe and Roasting Company. Why are you... Now that's a catchphrase. Uh, I'm saying goodbye, which is kind of lost on the podcast, but... Ah, but we know it. We know it. Spiritually. Spiritually, okay. you know I don't care. In your heart, you know it. I know. You know it. I'm going to end every set with a Creative Commons licensing spiel. Uh, remember radio comedy? No. How old are you? <laughs> Fibber McGee and Molly over here. Wow, see? You, you knew that. Uh -huh. It was on an episode of News Radio, the, the show that came on in the 1990s, I believe it was. The Shadow. Yeah. Sounds about right, 94. So. The Shadow was from the radio. Uh, I wonder how long this is the Shadow.